Just as many observers anticipated, the ongoing conflict in Gaza is taking an unexpected turn. Recent events indicate that the occupying forces are facing unexpected challenges from a resilient guerrilla resistance. These developments are reshaping the dynamics on the ground, making the occupation's military strategies less effective and escalating uncertainties about the campaign's success. Our commitment to highlighting overlooked stories remains unwavering. Help us amplify these narratives by engaging with and sharing this content to raise awareness. Hit the subscribe button and bell icon for timely updates on the situation in Palestine. Recent days have witnessed surprise attacks by Palestinian resistance forces against the occupation. These offensives have resulted in casualties among the occupying soldiers, prompting even the highest authorities, including Benjamin Netanyahu's administration, to acknowledge the evolving nature of the situation. There is growing evidence suggesting a strengthening of the Palestinian resistance while the Israeli forces grapple with challenges in combating this decentralized opposition. The resilience and determination of the Palestinian resistance fighters are evident in their ability to withstand the occupation's efforts. It appears increasingly likely that the crisis will culminate in a ceasefire or an armistice, with involved parties considering concessions. The feasibility of a complete defeat of the Palestinian resistance seems improbable based on current military and tactical assessments. According to Abu Obeda, the spokesperson for the Qasem Brigades, their fighters have effectively engaged and neutralized a significant number of Israeli soldiers and military vehicles in recent days. He highlighted their use of various weaponry and tactics in close combat against the invading forces. Abu Obeda detailed that within a four-day span, their operations resulted in casualties among the Israeli soldiers, vehicle incapacitations, and successful combat missions. The Qasem fighters targeted enemy strongholds and gatherings, employing missiles and mortar shells, leading to the disabling of multiple military vehicles, including Merkava tanks, in different regions of Gaza. An anti-personnel explosive device was detonated among an occupation infantry force in the Jur al-Dik area in central Gaza, resulting in the loss of lives, including at least six soldiers. Several occupation soldiers, including an army major, lost their lives in the Al-Qasib neighborhood in the Jabalia refugee camp in the northern Gaza Strip. Additionally, a special Israeli regime force of 10 soldiers sustained casualties from an anti-fortified TBG shell within a building in the Yur Aldik area in central Gaza. Military installations around Al-Zalal Mosque, located east of the city of Khan Yunis in southern Gaza, were targeted with a barrage of rockets and mortar shells. A Makava tank on al Nuja Street in the Jabalia al-Balad area in the northern Gaza Strip was targeted and hit with a tandem shell. Furthermore, a gathering of regime soldiers east of the Al Zaytun neighborhood in the southwestern Gaza Strip was targeted with heavy caliber mortar shells. The Sufa military site of the Israeli military and a nearby hideout of soldiers were targeted with a barrage of mortar shells. At least three Israeli military vehicles were also targeted using RPG shells and a guerrilla action device in Al Zaytun and Shujaya, located east of Gaza City. Military concentrations surrounding the Islamic complex east of the city of Khan Yunis in southern Gaza were targeted with heavy caliber mortar shells. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu acknowledged significant challenges on the front line while assessing the operation's success. 
He stated that more than a dozen soldiers had lost their lives in the territory since Friday, totaling 154 casualties in the ground assault. Despite Saturday being among the deadliest days, Netanyahu emphasized the necessity to persist with the fight. Commenting on the recent Israeli troop deaths, Netanyahu described the morning as difficult following a strenuous day of combat in Gaza. He affirmed his force's determination to continue with full force until the objectives of eliminating Palestinian resistance and securing the safe return of hostages held in Gaza are achieved. Meanwhile, in his first speech since the counteroffensive began in Israel, the leader of the Palestinian resistance in the Gaza Strip stated that the freedom fighters have inflicted significant losses on the Israeli occupation forces in the besieged territory and are not willing to accept the conditions set by the occupying regime. Yahya Sinwar, in a public message, emphasized that members of the Palestinian resistance's military wing, known as the Al-Qasim Brigades, were deeply engaged in intense confrontations with Israeli forces in Gaza, significantly challenging and weakening the regime's occupying army. Zin Zinwa highlighted the active involvement of the al Qassam brigades in an unprecedented and intense battle against the Israeli occupation forces. He firmly stated their efforts to undermine the strength of the Israeli army and their determination to persist, refusing any submission to the occupation's terms. Discussing the accomplishments of the resistance over two and a half months of Israeli aggression, Sinwa claimed that around 5,000 Israeli soldiers and officers were either killed or wounded since the ground operations began in late October. He indicated that approximately one-third of the Israeli forces, roughly 1,260 individuals, were killed, while the remainder sustained permanent disabilities or severe injuries. Zinwa further emphasized that Palestinian fighters, utilizing tactics such as snipers, anti-tank missiles, and explosive devices, had significantly damaged or destroyed about 750 Israeli armored vehicles, including tanks. Zinwa's comments arrive amidst discussions of renewed negotiations between Gaza-based resistance factions and Israel regarding a potential ceasefire agreement. 
Recent proposals from the occupation government suggest a temporary halt in hostilities, offering the release of a group of Israelis from Gaza in exchange for freeing certain Palestinian prisoners. Palestinian resistance has underscored that no exchange of prisoners will occur unless there's a comprehensive agreement to permanently halt the Israeli conflict and facilitate humanitarian aid into Gaza. The geopolitical implications of these developments are multifaceted. Firstly, the rhetoric and actions of the Palestinian resistance, as articulated by Yahya Sinwar, signal a steadfast refusal to yield to the conditions imposed by the occupying regime. This defiance amplifies tensions and underscores the enduring struggle between the resistance movement and the occupying forces. Sinwar's claims of inflicting significant losses on the Israeli military coupled with the reported casualties and damage to Israeli armored vehicles, portray a narrative of resilience and strength within the Palestinian resistance. These statements intensify the asymmetric nature of the conflict, challenging the perception of overwhelming dominance by the occupying forces. Moreover, Sinwar's mention of discussions for a potential ceasefire agreement reflects a moment of potential diplomatic negotiation amid the ongoing conflict. However, the conditions set forth by the Palestinian resistance underscore their demand for a comprehensive resolution. Their insistence on a permanent cessation of hostilities and the facilitation of humanitarian aid amplifies the complexity of reaching a lasting peace agreement. The proposed exchange of prisoners serves as a bargaining chip within this negotiation framework highlighting the intricacies involved in attempting to broker temporary ceasefires while addressing long-standing grievances. Overall, these developments signify a precarious balance between intensified conflict and potential diplomatic avenues, emphasizing the challenges of reconciling opposing demands and finding a sustainable resolution in a deeply entrenched and volatile geopolitical landscape. Support our work by liking and sharing this content. Hit the subscribe button to stay updated on the latest developments in Palestine. Until our next update, peace.